Chimir is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimir. Many animals in the known world have been tamed, but few have been truly domesticated. Wild canids of the mainland, coyotes and kajar, dire jackals of Picardia, and doles and common jackals in the rest of the known world are all too skittish and aggressive, and efforts to domesticate them have been largely unsuccessful. The Shu have domesticated jackals on the prairie for thousands of years, but they are not terribly derived, and only breeds are guard dogs, hunting companions, and house pets if they lack temperament for the other two jobs. Bred for temperament, they are fairly indistinguishable from wild jackals. Shoe hounds are highly regarded for their stealth, obedience, and endurance, but they lack the specialization of other breeds. Wolves in the southern islands and free states are a much different story. These animals, descended from the Mossbach wolf of northern Europe harvested during the Pleistocene, are one of the more common predators on these islands. Mainland wolves are generally small, barely distinguishable from Codrath coyotes, but the larger islands, they can reach a staggering 150 pounds. The southernmost islands are quite dry and these large wolves are aggressive and predatory. On Picardia, wolves are highly aggressive and have become one of the top predators in the lowland forests, largely outcompeting the resident dire jackal. In the islands to the west, however, where the climate is humid and there is minimal competition, wolves are omnivorous, with leaves and annual berries making up a bulk of their diet. These are much more docile, and even wild wolves are comfortable settling near people. From this stock, the Kaleen domesticated dogs. The domestication of western Kaleen wolves took place long before the arrival of the first children to the known world. These wolves were mostly kept as hunting companions and guardians, although it seems pretty quickly they began to spread to other qualities. As the Kaleen spread in the aftermath of the ruin of the first children, they took their dogs with them. Other cultures claim to have independently domesticated their dogs from local wolf and jackal stocks, but scholars of the Great Library are confident that all of these are hybrids of local canids with Kaleen hounds. Dogs were brought from Earth during the Mercantile Age around 3,000 years ago. The Free States have the highest numbers of this population, but in modern Chimere, there are very few lineages of pure Earth dogs, most having been integrated with the larger and healthier Kaleen hounds. Although there are hundreds of breeds throughout the world today, I'm going to cover a few notable focusing on at least one for each culture group. Although the Nerotans are famous for their domesticated lions as guardians of livestock and hunting companions, the rest of the Republic must rely on dogs and to a lesser degree, domesticated peccaries. A famous Republic breed, the Derukov Guardian is notorious as a livestock protector, fighting off lions, cockatrices, leopards, and pterosaurs that pose a threat. They were originally bred as scent hounds, and this keen sense of smell has translated well in early detection, not to mention tracking down and finishing threats if given the command. Easy to train and happy to subsist on refuse and whatever predators they catch, Derukov Guardians are widespread throughout the Republic farmlands today. The Court Hound was once a sight hound used by the Free States to watch over herds and hunt small game, but their elegant posture has appealed to the nobility to such a degree that they are now bred for accompanying oligarchs and other Free States nobles. They are a silent breed, but their ancestry as hunters comes out when their charges are threatened. Many a suspicious character has had a wandering hand bitten, and even assassins have been killed by this protective and deceptively proficient hound. Hyenas are highly regarded by the Telmede of the mountains. Although hyenas have not been successfully domesticated, due in large part to the aggression and size of the females, males of the common hyena are easily tamed and trained. In an effort to have a more accessible appearance of this sacred animal, the Utkubmatir have successfully bred powerful guard dogs to superficially resemble hyenas. These hyena mastiffs are among the most powerful dogs of the known world, and are popular companions of Mountain Telmede. 
Nobles still prefer to have true hyenas as companions, but hyena mastiffs are much easier to breed and train and require far less expensive food, so make up a majority of these companions, even amongst lesser nobles. Most dogs bred by the Arveleth north of the wall are kept for food or hunting companions, but a particular dog was bred uh, that has proven tremendously valuable, the Sloth Hound. These dogs are low-slung, being compared by scholars of the assembly as resembling a mix of a Dachshund and a Lab. They are proficient burrowers, with their short legs allowing them access to holes much smaller than other hounds of a similar size. They were bred not only to enter the dens of sloths, theskelosaurs, and dire weasels and kill them, but also to guard pantries and other food stores from these smaller ground sloths, which are notorious for burrowing under settlement walls and into pantries. This utility has proven highly successful, and our valid sloth hounds are now found throughout much of the known world. Like pigs, Picardians regard dogs as unclean. Throughout much of the Confederacy, dogs are not kept in settlements. Part of this is due to Parkardian stigma against animals that kill and eat people, something that dogs are known to do. Wolves are common predators in the Picardian lowlands, and their similarities to dogs are well acknowledged, especially as wolves and dogs freely mix, and these hybrids are the most common and dangerous man-eaters. The dire jackal, a large species of dole that has been in Picardia for much longer, is a similar canid, although they don't harm people and can't hybridize with dogs. They sometimes sneak off with a chicken or duck, earning them a reputation amongst one of the tricksters, but they are not despised like the Picardian wolf. In fact, many regard them with respect, seeing them as a more dignified and cunning version of the larger and more aggressive Picardian wolf. An exception to this trend is the Clans of the Spine. In this arid peninsula, the Picardian clans formed an alliance much older than the current confederacy. Wolves have long been a menace here, and also are the largest in Chimere, sometimes weighing up to 200 pounds. The Clans of the Spine said that they independently domesticated dogs from some of these wolves. Although spine dogs tend to be mostly of Kaleen stock, there are enough differences that many agree that at least some of their ancestry was of these giant wolves of the spine. The clans of the spine utilized many breeds of dogs, some kept for meat, others for livestock and home guardians and hunting. Most famous of these hounds is the Picardian Wolfhound. This sight hound is the tallest dog in Chimere, with males standing well over 3 feet tall at the shoulder and weighing over 200 pounds. Although not as compact as, say, the Dirukov Guardian or Akanuk Wolfhound, their long legs and lean musculature makes them ideal for their breed task, hunting and killing wolves. Because of this breed, wolves in the spine are now rare. They have brought these enormous dogs to other regions of the modern confederacy, especially as nobles of the spine marry into other clans to the north. Nobles of the Central Confederacy still view them with caution, and Panther clans dislike the number of leopards that have been killed by these hounds, but they do provide unparalleled defense to Picardian against wolves, panthers, and Gautwat monkeys that sometimes attack travelers. Many of these hounds are respected for their efforts in hunting down wolves in the main Confederacy lands. Wolfhounds breeding with wild wolves has unfortunately resulted in a high number of particularly large and aggressive wild dogs that are among the most dangerous man-eaters in Picardia, but hunters of the spine are quick to put down what they acknowledge as a problem of their making when this does occur. The Kenturim has a large number of dog breeds, but their most famous is the Kenturim Water Dog. This hound is fairly small, but with webbed feet, a strong build, and dense waterproof fur, is an excellent swimmer. They are a generalist breed, but are often used as retrievers of shot fowl and delivery dogs between passing ships. Their jaws are weak, helping them to not damage parchment or fowl. They are proficient divers as well, and are known to dive up to 30 feet to collect crabs, herd fish, or retrieve dropped fishing gear. Tamed sea badgers were once used for this task, and some Kenturim clans maintain this to tradition, but for the most part Kenturim water dogs are much preferred for this task as they are much easier to train, greater versatility, and being small enough to rest with a fisherman on their canoe on their way to and from fishing sites.
The Akanuk are considered the best dog breeders in Chimir. They have a long history, going back millennia, of observing breed health. A conclusion that they have come to is that temperament and health are paramount. Other Chimerans breed for outstanding features and coloration, but the Akanuk consider this to be an influence of inbreeding that irresponsibly and irreparably damages the health of their best friends. Akanuk dogs are blessed with a strain of hereditary magic by a witch back before the Dark Ages. It is not nearly as potent as that of Chimerans, and has been diluted over the years, but they take around three years to reach adulthood and can live well into their 60s. This may have slowed their breeding process, but helps their health and also makes them companions for much longer, perhaps contributing to the care and attention that the Akanuk treat their hounds. There are a wide range of Akanuk dog breeds, each bred for a different task. Most famous, largest, and indeed featured in one of my short stories of Frost and Famine is the Whale Hound. Whale hounds are bred to be watchdogs on ships and to aid in manipulating whales in the water once caught. Whales are keen of hearing and can be quite skittish. For this reason, whale hounds do not bark, instead signal when they hear whales or see a spout in the water and wag their flag-like tails. Like the Kentarim water dog, which does have an Akanuk analog as a messenger dog, whale hounds have webbed toes and dense fur that is water resistant. These dogs can be massive. Guppik in Of Frost and Famine is described as being the size of a small pony. They can weigh up to 400 pounds, although 250 to 300 is much more common. They are of great benefit to whalers when processing a catch. The hounds can jump in the water and maneuver the whale about as the blubber is stripped. There are many scavengers in the cold southern seas, and it pays to not linger near a corpse, so having a couple dogs to position the kill is of great benefit. Whale hounds most commonly have patches of black and white fur, often superficially resembling an earth panda, but they may have other coat variations as well. Whale hounds are powerful animals, but are not aggressive towards people. They will readily fight animal threats, but it takes a lot of prompting for them to attack chimerans, so they would be terrible in a war context despite their impressive size. Seal hounds are quite similar to whale hounds, being bred for similar purposes, but generally smaller and more aggressive. Guardian hounds of the Akanuk are frightening beasts. Often weighing in at 200 pounds, these great mastiffs are quite happy to tear into people and are a main reason why pirates and raiders avoid Akanuk villages. Predators are also readily swarmed. They have high caloric demand, so villages usually can't support more than a few of these hounds, but they are quite highly valued by their people. Last, and perhaps most peculiar of the Akanuk hounds, is the medicine dog. These little dogs are not of Akanuk breed, being a colleen dog bred for meat, but the Akanuk have repurposed them as vital assistants to healers. These small dogs run extremely hot, helpful in maintaining a patient warm in the cold southern nights. They are highly intelligent and trained to recognize a wide range of ailments common amongst Chimerans, and are known to get a healer or even fetch proper medicines themselves that they recognize. Having a bit of Akanuk hound in them has given them hereditary magic of their own, and it is not uncommon for a medicine dog to live past a century, giving them a significant base of knowledge and treatments. As on Earth, Dogs have played an important role in the lives of Chimerans and success in this dangerous world. They are truly man's best friend. Cheers to Grisat for sponsoring this episode. Although I'm allergic, I've always loved dogs, and the evolution, domestication, and wide range of uses in historical cultures is a topic that has long fascinated me. It was exciting to put these ideas into a format like this. Cheers to my patrons for your support, and thank you all for watching. Stay fantastic, you wonderful people. Cheers, folks!